llamo John de Marco Learning y esta noche vamos a preparar por este examen que viene mañana um, a todos. Let me know, déjame saber en este chat de dónde vienes, qué uh, quieres practicar hoy. Already people are telling me that you'd like to go through the, um, the cultural comparison. Let me know what is really important to you. Um, I'm here to help. And if you're watching this video um, after it's over, go ahead and post your comments and questions in the chat, like this video and subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of great resources. In fact, we have a whole big, I'll delete this. There's a whole big playlist for AP Spanish language in which I dive into, especially those spoken parts of the exam that are freaking people out. Um, the other thing that's that's important to remember, and this is just an overarching theme of all of the cram sessions and live reviews we're doing the night before, y'all, you ain't going to learn Spanish in one night. You've got to trust tu propia voz, go in tomorrow, speak in, in the best voice that you can, write in the best voice that you can, make mistakes, plan on making those mistakes, and do your absolute best. That's all we can do at this point. It's we're all a work in progress. We're all making making the most of what we've got. Okay, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to walk you through a few things that are going to help you break this down. Remember, the course and exam description for AP Spanish language is the guidelines for everything that we're going to see on the actual exam. The course can be divided into these different modes. Remember, there are six themes, temas curriculares. Uh, which we're going to see um, throughout the, the course. You're going to see these mentioned, rather, rather throughout the exam, mentioned specifically. Um, this stuff we can ignore. A few things about like what these themes actually entail. And your teacher may or may not have focused on them. They may have focused on entretamiento. They may have focused on arquitectura. They may have focused on um, things like la demográfica. Pero if they didn't focus on those things, don't worry about it, right? Because it's not, this is not a contest for you to know all of the demographics of Latin America or know about architecture in Spain. It's just that's where they can, that's where they've recommended you all spend your time. So if these themes, you've seen them before, that's what this exam is, is structured around. There's um, a breakdown of the exam that looks like this. That's really important for you to under, understand. Um, and, oops, sorry, I'm gonna go back one. Um, which is that the multiple choice questions are going to count for, sorry, let me just do it like this. The multiple choice questions are going to count for half of your total score, 30 questions in 40 minutes, um, and then 35 questions in 55 minutes. You're going to start with just print text, and then you're going to go print and audio text combined and just audio text. And we'll glance at that real quick, but we're going to prestar atención a estas respuestas abiertas, preguntas abiertas, which are the four free response questions. Notice that each of these four free response questions is identical in its value, um, that, that, they're, that they count exactly the same. That's pretty striking about the Spanish exam um, and all of the, the language exams is that you have an email reply that's only 15 minutes, counting just as much as an argumentative essay that is 55. Right. And then these two conversations and cultural comparisons count for 18 minutes. This is where we're going to spend our time. It's where we spend our time historically on that playlist for the Marco Learning YouTube channel. Um, OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you all to a practice a set of materials that you have not seen before. And so this is definitely something not just like the 2019 version, which you can find. It's open on the website. I'm going to take you to a Marco Learning practice test and walk you through this free response. So. Mañana, cuando, cuando ustedes están sentados en, en sus sillas escribiendo este examen, this is how you're going to start that free response section after the break. And let me just move this and make sure that I see. Uh, by the way, it's great to see so many people here in the chat. People are asking for, for presentations. Great, um, wonderful. So many great, great people here. If you like this video, press that like button. Um, and make sure that you uh, subscribe to our channel. We have a whole playlist for Spanish Lang. So when this is over, we're here to help. Okay, so you're going to get that 15 minute um, uh, email that starts. 15 minutes will fly by. If you have not practiced this, this is something for you to think about tonight um, is what can you accomplish very quickly in 15 minutes? And how do you make sure that you get the job done? Now, the job done is right here. A la izquierda en inglés, al derecho en español. 
en español, vas a escribir una respuesta a un mensaje electrónico, vas a tener 15 minutos para leer ese mensaje y escribir tu respuesta. Tu respuesta. So, it's 15 minutes, do it. Tu respuesta debe incluir un saludo y una despedida. So, there's requirements here. You need that greeting, you need that closing. Y debe responder a todas las preguntas y peticiones del mensaje. So, you have to make sure that every single request, normally there's two, the one we're going to look at has three. You got to respond to each of those questions. If you don't, you fall short of, of completing the task. En tu respuesta debes pedir más información sobre algo mencionado en el mensaje, which means you got to ask for something else. And it feels really fake and forced, but welcome to like AP exams. You have to like fake it till you make it with a question you have for this person that's really ostentatiously, really obviamente, put like put right there at the end. And then you... Uh, should respond in that formal form of address. So definitely do the, you know, querido señora Martinez and the usted and all of that that you'll need. This essay, this email will be graded holistically. So you're going to get to this uh, email and you're going to respond and the, you're not earning points like in an AP US history or AP world history exam. You're earning points based on uh, whether your overall approach to the task is complete and sufficiently long and of sufficiently high quality Spanish. If there's a vibe that you're more in the middle, you didn't do the task or your Spanish isn't quite as good, you might face challenges. Okay, the tema curricular es los desafíos mundiales. Y esta introducción es muy importante. Este mensaje electrónico es de la responsable de un programa de intercambio estudiantil. Has recibido este mensaje porque te han aceptado en el programa para el año que viene y debes proporcionar, proporcionar más detalles. Y viene de una mujer que se llama Marisa Puentes. Este asunto, the subject here, es programa de intercambio universitario. So then we get estimada, we get this whole thing, And then a basic description. I have the great pleasure of telling you, y'all, you're going to University of Salamanca. Um, it's very prestigious. It's going to be all about student collaboration, blah, blah, blah. That's really kind of filler that repeats a lot of what's here. Your focus tomorrow is going to be right into the questions. And here there's three, again, normally two. En preparación de esta nueva promoción de estudiantes, necesitamos que nos responda unas preguntas sobre sus preferencias para poder, etc. So, number one, ¿podrá unirse al programa durante el curso entero o solamente un semestre? En ese caso, ¿cuál? So, take a minute, oh, actually, I'm going to have you do this with question two. Number two, ¿prefiere alojarse en una residencia de estudiantes en el campus universitario o buscar alojamiento por su cuenta? And then number three, ¿ha visitado antes uh, la ciudad y la universidad solicitada? I want you all, okay, to try question number two in the chat right now. You're just going to write one sentence in Spanish or two in response to this question. ¿Prefiere usted alojarse en una residencia de estudiantes en el campus universitario o... Buscar alojamiento por su cuenta. So, take a minute in the chat and write for me one to two sentences en español que responde a esa pregunta aquí. Make it a little bit wider so I think we can see it better. And I'll give it a few seconds. Good. And if you don't know what alojamiento is, do your best. This is a great, I'm glad we're having a little crisis here with alojamiento for a second, because you're going to have this possibility happen to you tomorrow and you're not going to panic. You're going to be super calm. You're going to be super calm because you've practiced this tonight. Okay. So I'm going to wait for my sentences here. So we've got our first one. Me gustaría alojarme en una residencia estudiantil. Good. And you could say to flesh that out a little bit more. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? Blah, blah, blah. And give me that reason. So go ahead and add that and keep going 
in, I'm starting to see them come in. So Blake's got, yo prefiero quedar en una residencia de estudiantes en el campus universitario porque espero que ellos puedan ayudarme con mis clases. There, Blake has successfully answered the sort of por qué part. Here's my answer. Here's a por qué. Here's the why. And has shown off a little subjunctive. Lo subjuntivo. Muy bien. Catherine, prefería alojarse en una residencia de estudiantes en el campus universitario. Next sentence. Quiero más oportunidades para hablar con nuevas personas. Muy bien. So it's, you didn't do a por qué, but you presented two consecutive sentences in nice, crispy, clean Spanish. That gets the job done. That feels elegant and formal. This is what your job is to do tomorrow. Even if you don't know alojamiento, you could figure out from the context clues. Whatever you're alojaring in, you're alojaring in una residencia de estudiantes. Or you can find your own alojamiento. So you're going to alojar with in the residencia, or you're going to find your own alojamiento. And cuando piensas en este contexto de alojarse en residencia o alojamiento, you can get to the, to the right result. And we also know it's like a student program. So like, where are y'all going to live? Where are you going to stay? Um, muy bien. Y muchos ejemplos aquí en este chat. You guys are killing it right now. These are awesome. Prefiero quedar en una residencia. Uh, prefiero alojarme. Right. And I like that um, alojarme. That's that capturing the reflexiveness of the verb. Um, and then in that one example, I see prefiero alojarse. You want to say alojarme because you're, you're, you're staying there. Um, muy bien. Me gustaría. A lot of you are using that um, elegant um, uh, conditional there. Me gustaría muchísimo en alojarme en el campus. Y'all are fine. We could just end this session right now. You're killing it in the chat, right? You're, you're taking this task and just Breaking it down, the, the, this is, you're slaying. Mucho es slay en este chat con estas frases perfectas. And I love that I'm seeing the chat just fill up with great examples of two sentences, crisp, formal, giving me a reason why. Then question three, ha visitado. Okay, now, now we're going to face a tough part real quick here, which is, you've got this. Para poder diseñar actividades específicas para nuestros estudiantes, bla, 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 bla. Go to our website para saber más detalles. Esperamos su respuesta y de nuevo le damos enhorabuena, bla, 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 formal, atentamente. So, before you get to your own atentamente, my quick reminder for y'all is, y'all got to come up with a question. You're going to this youth program in la Universidad de Salamanca. You got to figure out whether you're staying in este campus universitario. You got to figure out whether you're going to like what you're going to study or whatever with these people. Um, you need to come up with your fake question right now. Using el, el slay. Right. That would be, by the way, awesome if tomorrow on the AP Spanish exam, there was, uh, if there was some way to get el slay with the Espanol el slay at the front of it. Pero right now, I need y'all to stop focusing on the el slay, el slay yarse, and focus on Preguntarse. I need preguntas for esta señora Marisa Puertas. So I need dos preguntas en, en este chat que tiene que ver con este tema, este tema de um, desafíos mundiales, este tema de este programa de intercambio universitario, universitario en la Universidad de Salamanca. Yo necesito dos preguntas. Go in the chat. Two questions. Great. So, Cecilia, you have como es el ambiente de la universidad. Maybe you could explain a little bit more. Like, what do you mean by that environment? That, that is it el, ambien, el ambiente social and, and ecológica? Um, what's that? Is it, is it about the sort of city environment? ¿Cuál es la relación entre este programa y la ciudad de Salamanca? Um, uh, ¿Qué es urbano o rural? ¿Fuera de la ciudad? O dentro, el, el casco antiguo. Something like that. Good. So I'm going to pull this up for everyone. I'm going to zoom out and get you all. This is your email. You're writing two questions for me. Hurry up, people. We don't have time for this. Good. ¿Cómo sería cualidad de situación de viviendo en este campus? ¿Qué sería el horario? And you could mention, so Marisa's mentioning like, oh, what about the schedule? Well, she did send you the website. 
So you could say, oh, I went to your website, but I still didn't see a schedule, right? And so like, it's sort of faking that, like, I'm really engaging with you thing. Um, and uh, in el caso de no poder alojarme en el campus universitario, ¿cuánto sería el presupuesto de un hotel? Um, so what's the best uh, do, 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 do? Good. Este curso en medio ambiente. Cuanto dura el, el programa. Again, cite that, that part here where she's saying like, bro, we got information on davinci.org. So try to get that information or sort of cite it and ask for more. But you're all on the right track. On the email reply for AP Spanish language, you need to make sure that you're paying attention to these instructions. These instructions will be the same. En inglés y en español, mañana, cuando tomas ese examen. So this is going to be the same. You know this. In 15 minutes, you're going to move quickly. There's a lot of filler. Estimada. Tango el ser. Like filler, filler, filler. Get to the questions. Answer the questions robustly with that por qué, with that extra sentence of desarrollo. And then desarrollar eh, tus propias preguntas para terminar este proyecto de, de escribir un email. This is really sencillo, this assignment, right? This doesn't tend to freak people out. You just want to make sure you're, you're saying in a nice clip, 15 minutes is going to fly. You're going to slay this email. You're going to eslayar it, the email, and you're going to get right into the argumentative essay. This will last you, what, 55 minutes? It's going to be a long haul. So you've got one minute to read the directions. They're always the same. You're doing this for a Spanish writing contest right? Um, you're going to have 40 minutes to write your essay after six minutes of reading the topic and the printed material. We're not going to do that. We're going to move a lot faster. The tema curricular de este ensayo argumentativo, parte dos de este free response, es la influencia de la lengua y la cultura en la identidad. So we're getting into that culture and language aspect of this. Primero tiene seis minutos para leer el tema de ensayo, la fuente número uno y la fuente número dos. Tema del ensayo, ¿estás en contra o al, a favor del Spanglish? Del Spanglish, y ya cono, conocemos Spanglish muy bien aquí en los Estados Unidos. Spanglish, tenemos un, obviamente, un artículo de Spanglish. Spanglish, Spanglish, Spanglish. Un gráfico aquí. Ah, aquí, es muy fácil, ¿no? Um, Anita, Mark, Anita, Mark. Ok, a short Spang, a Spanglish conversation. Hola, good morning. ¿Cómo estás? Good, y tú? Todo bien. Pero tuve problemas parqueando mi carro this morning. Sí, I know. Siempre hay problemas parqueando en la area at this time. Pero, like, it can be a mix of, of Spanish and, like, English pronunciation. It can be something that can throw people off. Um, but it's fine. Um, So we get this little graphic that shows you what Spanglish looks like. It's a blend of Spanish and English. And then we have this article, which has, what, about 35 lines or so, or 30 lines, breaking down the essentials of um, Spanglish in the United States. When you're reading this article, officially you have six minutes, but you're going to be able to reference the article throughout the whole thing. So as you spend your six minutes, look how quickly I was able to get through the graphic. Normally this is like, a cartoon or chart, a little bit of fake data. You can get through that in like 30 seconds very often, right? You can bank some time here, but I want to encourage you all on the argumentative essay for AP Spanish language, do not microscopically overanalyze every single word of this passage. This is not a reading comprehension part of the test. They got a separate reading comprehension part of the test that nobody wants. Right? You have just been doing that for an hour. Get fast and get the main idea. So here, let's go work through it real quick. When you're, and when, you, when you're scan reading something, what you want to do is focus on the first and last paragraph and the first or second sentence of each paragraph. So let's do it. First paragraph. En una muestra más de la sostenida penetración de los habitantes, de... un estudio confirma que alrededor de 40 millones de personas hablan ya en Estados Unidos la mezcla de inglés y español conocido como Spanglish. Y que okay, en opinión del profesor de Amherst College de Massachusetts, Ilan Stavans, es una nueva manifestación verbal que merece un reconocimiento, whatever that means. Look, 40 million, people, 40 million people are speaking up some Spanglish in their day. And a good example of Spanglish is eslear. 
I think. Because a slay, slay cannot, it cannot be, it's matar. So you, I'm going to a slay, this is a Spanish exam, or hay mucho slay, um, or hay mucho ris in este chat. Like there's a lot that you can do in, in mixing words and it's kind of fun and playful. Y 40 millones de personas lo hacen cada día. Okay, now that we've got through that first paragraph, I get it, lots of people speak in Spanish, we can move faster. Um, fuerza y fenomeno, blah, 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 skip, 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 skip all these people. Um, people, no. Para el experto, el surmiento de Spanglish tiene diversos factores. There's lots of factors that lead up to it. Um, there are many kinds of Spanglish, Tex-Mex kind of Spanish, Cubo, Cuban kind of Spanish, Spanglish. Um, it's hybrid, right? Um, you find it at the frontier of Mexico and, and Puerto Rico. Great. There's uh, great things. Okay. There's Spanglish on TV, the Broadway show for this guy. Uh, this is, shouldn't be considered, a, Spanish isn't a foreign language. So according to his criteria, blah, blah, blah. It's something, something. Uh, with the last paragraph, we want to slow down. Según su criterio, la RAA, the Real Académica Española, menosprecia el término Spanglish porque es un fenómeno callejero de la gente pobre, sin acceso a la educación, al poder político, y lo califica como una deformación de elementos léxicos y gramaticales del inglés y español. So, what did we get out of this whole passage? Don't look at the passage, I'm taking it away from you. What we got out of this passage was a very clear view. Spanglish is a thing for 40 million people. It exists at frontiers. It exists on television. It exists en la calle. So it's not as like official as other things. Esta es plenty of information. That's all you need to really get a grip on the passage. Go back when you want to cite a particular part of what Elan Stevens said and, and, and sort of grab that particular section. So to summarize, when you get to the argumentative essay task, use your six minutes very, very wisely. Spend that time. I like to go to the graphic first because it's like muy fácil. And then I go here and I spend a few minutes and I kind of race read it and I can go back and, and slow read it when I, when, I, when I want to later. Then we get this um, audio. And what I'm going to do for you all is I'm actually going to play the audio of this because I want to practice something with you all tonight. Y'all can't become fluent Spanish speakers and fix all your broken Spanglish that you're eslearing for this exam. But you can practice the skills like making sure you're focusing on, on emails, on answering questions, and asking your own. On the argumentative essay, not re doing reading comprehension, but bringing it under control. Here, we're going to practice our note-taking skills. So I'm going to clear the screen for a minute. Uh, actually, I'll put this here. And OK. Um, OK, great. And yes, you will get the, um, sorry about the slay tangents. That's okay, great. And if, by the way, if you're enjoying this video, press that like button, subscribe to our channel. Remember at Marco Learning, we have an entire playlist dedicated to AP Spanish. And y'all are, um, yeah, you didn't, this is a new exam. So you didn't take this exam uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, oh no, you took the AP Spanish language exam. Yes, that's right, Junior. Thank you for being here. So, so let's grab the um, file six, which I'm going to play right now. You're going to get this. Um, twice on the exam. And here we go. So, and I'm going to assume you're all going to be able to hear this. Esto hay que a la de Hang on one no second. Okay. So this is going to play um, for the next couple of minutes. And I'm going to make sure this is nice and loud for all of you to hear. And you can let me know that you can hear it in the chat. Um, just say yes. And then I'm gonna play this. It, oh, it's a one minute, 30 seconds. You're gonna get it twice. What I want you all to do real quick before I, I press play on this is grab a sheet of paper and a pencil. Go right now. I have my Marco learning paper. Isn't that great? Um, but grab your paper and your pen and imagine yourself right now in the test. I know if you're listening on your phone, in your bed, get up, get a sheet of paper, Get un bolígrafo. Remember, you're writing your essay in bolígrafo, no en lápiz, right? You have to write in pen. Um, so grab that pen and give me in the in the uh, chat here. Let's see if we can find the emoji for pen. 
once people have their pen and paper pen yeah there we go look at that that's a that's a pen emoji good i got my pen ready so give me those pen emojis get ready we're going to practice your note taking you're going to get every audio twice you're not going to be able to access the audio afterwards and when you have the audio twice like you need to ask yourself am i listening to it the first time and not taking notes am i taking notes the first time am i um or am I like listening the first time and taking notes the second time or vice versa or taking notes both times? Um, so this is um, great. I've got lots of little papers, lots of little things. People are ready. And this 90 second play is, a, a, this audio is about to play. So presta atención. It says, la política de natu natural naturalización de Canadá frente a los Estados Unidos. So let's listen. And pay attention, 90 seconds, go. Esto hay que faxiárselo a la oficina de cámara porque nos hace falta que nos den el authorization number okay. porque lo mandaron para trial insurance porque no tenían la autorización. And this one, I need you to call Medicare para ver si tiene deducible cubierto. And this one, we need to call the office too para coger la información de seguro. Um, este se lo da a mami para que lo faxe también, para entonces pedir el número de Medicare that, so that we can transmit it. And this other one, this... La conversación transcurre en una oficina de Miami, Florida. El jefe de la empresa, Raimel García, y su empleada, Melissa Acosta, son bilingües. Hablan perfecto español e inglés, pero prefieren comunicarse mezclando ambos idiomas. Esta práctica tiene influencias en ambas direcciones idiomáticas, y está dando lugar a una fusión cultural innegable, la hispanización de Estados Unidos y la fuerte anglosajonización de los hispanos. Esta mezcla de los idiomas español e inglés ha originado un complejo fenómeno, una lengua híbrida llamada Spanglish. Ok, este ya lo faxié. This one, I already looked up the date of birth. Um, this one I have to leave over there. Um, este ya lo busqué, Medicare number no estaba bien y ya lo, I refiled. Uh, y este, refiled. Y este ya la fecha de habit, de nacimiento. Okay, so all y'all who were just chatting away in the chat forgot your bolígrafos and you were like, got all confused about the task at hand. The task people was to take notes. Let me know in the chat whether you Um, first of all, there was that Spanglish that was playing at the beginning and the end and un acento muy de Miami that could be a little bit confusing. Don't let that throw you or even like music, the like, oh, great, we're in a cafe in Miami. Got to push that away. Did you end up actually effectively taking notes on your page? Were you able to get the content that you need from the notes that, that, uh, that you took or are you going to need to take notes again? So let me know in the chat, you have good enough notes, you're gonna to need to take more notes or you are waiting on the thing. I wanna know about your strategy for this. So um, we are in the argumentative essay for AP Spanish uh, language. We, are, we have just glanced over the reading, skimmed it. We have just glanced over the Spanglish chart that we have. And now we've listened to the audio once. We're gonna to listen to it again, but I wanna see um, how this, you need to listen to it again. Um, yeah, so the background noise, sometimes it, you'll, will, most of the time you won't hear background noise. Um, you'll hear, uh, like a guy, a newscaster guy, or you'll hear two people speaking a lot of entrevistas. Um, and sometimes students have told me like, it feels like it goes really fast and other people are like, it's fine. Um, so, um, yeah, you wrote in Spanglish, you need more notes. So there is no, so one question that came here is, you know, um, what's the, be the best way to do this? The best way to do this is the way that makes sense for you. I'm somebody who does well really listening the first time and not necessarily taking notes. You might be someone who really needs to jot those notes because you're going to get amnesia on the test and in five minutes, forget everything, right? Sometimes you want to get little phrases, right? He used some, the, the he said, uh, fusión cultural in something. Oh, I wrote it down badly. So actually, I need to make sure I get that phrase down so I can grab the quotes. Your job in the argumentative essay is to use all 
three sources, the written source you have in front of you, 35 lines, the little Spanglish example, and then this audio. So um, we're gonna do this one more time for 90 seconds. I want you all to capture the notes and get it right. So take a minute and uh, 90 seconds, good luck. Esto hay que faxiárselo a la oficina de cámara porque nos hace falta que nos den el authorization number okay. porque lo mandaron para travel insurance porque no tenían la autorización. And this one, I need you to call Medicare para ver si tiene deducible cubierto. And this one, we need to call the office too para coger la información de seguro. Um, este se lo da a mami para que lo faxee también para entonces pedir el número de Medicare that, so that we can transmit it. And this other one, this la conversación transcurre en una oficina de Miami, Florida. El jefe de la empresa, Raimel García, y su empleada, Melissa Acosta, son bilingües. Hablan perfecto español e inglés, pero prefieren comunicarse mezclando ambos idiomas. Esta práctica tiene influencias en ambas direcciones idiomáticas y está dando lugar a una fusión cultural innegable, la hispanización de Estados Unidos y la fuerte anglosajonización de los hispanos. Esta mezcla de los idiomas español e inglés ha originado un complejo fenómeno, una lengua híbrida llamada Spanglish. Ok, este ya lo faxié. This one, I already looked up the date of birth. Um, this one I have to leave over there. Um, este ya lo busqué, Medicare number no estaba bien, y ya lo I refiled. Uh, y este refiled y este ya la fecha de habit de nacimiento so yes you some people are pointing out that could be grainy and hard to hear I'll also add in a layer to this that in, in the all audio experiences and 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 this conversation part which we're going to get to there's like junky headphones and a junky microphone and like it's a very messy experience you've got to let that roll right off of you. You have a job to do tomorrow, people. Your job is to get points on this test. It's not a point by point, like I said, for like AP US history, world history, or European history, but it is something that you can really focus on um, by just drilling into what you know you can accomplish. You're not gonna try to get the highest possible scores. You're gonna aim for the thing that, that you can do. How many of you, let me know, were you able to take, okay, uh, took W notes this time and left no crumbs, no megas anywhere when you were taking them. How many of you got better at taking notes um, this second time through? You were able to let, I, I caught my thing, fusión cultural innegable. Now I have a little phrase. Do I have to quote it? No. Does it make it better if I do quote it? Yes. Little comillas around it. And cite fuente número tres. Uh, la grabación, la grabación fuente número tres que, um, de Canadá, right? And um, okay, so um, yes, you got better. Me, a lot of people got better. W no test, pretty good notes. So tomorrow, make sure that you're able to um, make sure that you're you're being strategic. The other thing you need to make sure you're doing, this is really important, okay? None of you are allowed to panic tomorrow. I don't give you permiso. You have to like, when, you, when, you, when things go badly tomorrow, you're going to just put your pen down for a second, regroup and say, actually, I didn't need to, you're gonna, you know what you're gonna do? Do what you always do when you don't do your homework, which is like lie to yourself a little bit, like not that big of a deal. I can go back and double check. Or if it's audio and you can't, I have fusión cultural innegable. And that's enough for me to create a nucleus around which to write. So when things go badly and you're crossing things out and you're panicking and you're crying, get, get out of that bad frame of mind and focus on what you can do, right? So, and it's the same thing with the, the audio distractions. Don't give yourself those excuses. So um, I'm gonna actually, everyone in the chat, I want you to write this down. I want you to write no excuses mañana. No excuses mañana. Type that in the chat for me. I want to see the chat fill up. We're going to do the luego, luego. But no excuses tomorrow for like uh, the audio track was distracting to me or like I didn't know what alojamiento meant. It didn't matter. Alojarse, you can figure out. Bad audio, you can figure out. 
You only need to know pieces of this, right? Um, and so, yeah, that's right. You will not be perfect and that's okay. That's like a theme of a lot of our sessions here. Um, no excuses manana. And here they are coming in. I can see them through the chat. No excuses manana is our theme because tomorrow it's all about executing on what you know how to do. And speaking of executing, let's execute. Let's slay this part of the test as well, which is the uh, conversation. So they're going to play the audio. You're going to have one minute to read the instructions. You're going to participate in this thing, et cetera. Then we get to this. You're going to have one minute to read the introduction, okay? In your task, um, you're going to, uh, actually it goes here. Uh, you're going to um, go back and forth and you're going to have 20 seconds. How many of you have practiced? Let me know in the chat whether you have practiced the 20 second clip for um, AP Spanish uh, language audio, where, where you, you kind of feel what 20 seconds is between the beeps. When you go through the experience tomorrow, don't worry if you have a few seconds of lag time at the end. Don't worry if as you're going through that experience, you, you kind of, you get cut off a couple of times. This is not a contest to fit your answer into 20 seconds, but try to fit your answers um, within that time frame. So here, esta es una conversación con tu amigo. Vas a participar en esta conversación porque estás hablando de una celebración familiar, which is something that we saw um, on last year's exam. Uh, was something uh, was also about planning a family celebration because it's about families and communities. This is the Carolina question from last year. And in fact, I'm going to take you all to that specific one because that is a fast one for us to do. Um, so give me just one second, which is... So the, by the way, I want to show you something um, really important, which is in addition to the playlist that we have on the Marco Learning Channel, you'll see that when I'm going through that, 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 those, these various examples, I'm coming here to the College Board's website. Um, on the College Board's website, if you scroll down, you can re see the 2022 free response questions and then also all the past exam questions, which is every single year since 2012. So more practice than you can possibly use tonight. Um, so. Let's see. Um, yeah, oh, that's an important point um, that Jack's making. Practice with the small voice recorders. Remember not to press stop when meaning pause, right? So when it says, ahora presiona pause, he'll say, not stop. Um, great. Um, and by the way, one thing too, we were just talking about like YouTube playlists. One, the one I've been referencing is the one you're on, Marco Learning. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel and check out the videos that we've done. We have one on writing. We have um, several for the 2020 exam that are all about that spoken, this spoken part of the exam that we're going to be previewing tonight. today. So if we go to um, the free response questions for 2022 and we go to the Carolina sample from last year, right? Um, you're going to see, here's your, with your prima Carolina, and then you're going to see the speaking audio prompts. And let's go to the um, conversation. Now, you're going to- You see have one minute to read the directions for this task. Tienes un minuto para leer las instrucciones de este ejercicio. So you will get your one minute. Notice one thing that's really important. I want to uh, point out here is some verbs you'll likely see tomorrow include this one, que es sugiere, this is at the, the bottom here, sugiere un plan y explica. You need to suggest a plan and explain it, or you need to rechazar. If you rechaz, rechazar, you're going to reject the suggestion and offer a different one. Okay, um, so this, um, you're going to have one minute for this. This audio is going, it's going to go for the, until it gets us to one minute, and then it's going to tell us this. You will now begin this task. Ahora vas a empezar este ejercicio. You have one minute to read the preview. Tienes un minuto para leer la introducción. So actually, yes, the first minute is for the, these instructions, which is, are, are always the same. Um, 
And could you guys, do you guys hear that? Um, okay, wait, maybe it's not playing that. Oh, I see why, okay, hang on. Um, yeah, let me just grab this file here. Sorry about that, everyone. I'm gonna you have it. one minute to read the directions for this task. So you're, they're reading the directions, you read through the, the description, and then it's gonna begin, and it goes right around here. And let's just play it for a few seconds and talk about what makes a good sample. Okay. Now the conversation will begin. Press the pause button now to resume the recording. You en este momento va a comenzar la conversación. Ahora presiona pause para continuar la grabación. Hola, te llamo para planear nuestra celebración familiar. Bueno, lo primero que tenemos que decidir es en qué época del año podríamos hacerla. ¿Qué piensas? There's that first beep. You're going to have 20 seconds to answer qué piensas about my idea. This goes on as you're as you're doing your response. Say, here's my response in Spanish, and then and then offer like try to offer one or two reasons because before you know it, that next buzzer is going to go off and 20 seconds has passed. So this is the next. Me one. parece buena idea. ¿Y dónde crees que podemos tener el evento? A mí me gustaría ir a un parque, pero no sé. ¿Tú qué opinas? So now it's it's begun. I think it should be in a park. What do y'all think? And she, it says, um, let's see, responde a la pregunta con detalles. So then we have a chance um, to uh, make sure that we get the, the, the proper response. So should it be in a park or not? And we answer this 20 seconds. I want it one more time. I'm gonna play that 20 seconds. And I want you to be thinking about what you would say, or you, you know what, I can't hear you. You could try to respond. In fact, that's what we're going to do real quick. I'm going to go back to 303 here. And I want you to speak out loud to yourself like a crazy person in your room uh, in a response to this. Okay. This will be just playing in a second. Me parece buena idea. ¿Y dónde crees que podemos tener el evento? A mí me gustaría ir a un parque, pero no sé. ¿Tú qué opinas? So, then try it. Go ahead. Estoy de acuerdo. So that's how long, whatever, if you were sort of imagining your response or saying it, that's what that 20 second feels like. By the way, época means like a season or time of year. So you know, época, like la época medieval, que yo estudié en la universidad, yo soy historiador de la época medieval, pero la época también tiene que ver con estaciones, primavera, uh, verano, invierno, etc. Okay. Um, okay. Now, The, the task then, once you're done with this, it's all kind of one straight shot. It will fly. What you are, and remember this, everyone, you're being graded holistically on the whole picture. So even if you flub answer number two, if la bellarse, and it's a muy mal respuesta, and you're freaking out, um, chill and just deliver something good on the next question. If you don't know what época means, take a guess. If you don't know what alojamiento is, you take a guess. You've got to power through and deliver a result. The grader wants to give you a high score. I'm going to repeat that again. The reader for the AP Spanish language exam wants to give you a high score. But if you panic and clam up and you have excuses, remember we said no excuses mañana. If you are panicky, they can't give you points. So focus on completing the task and forcing the reader to give you points. Um, so this task that we just saw, yes, is 12.5% of the entire exam. It flies by very quickly. And then we get to the final piece. So this is the final task. And this is the cultural comparison. And you know how this works if you've done this before. You have four minutes to prepare and two minutes straight to record your presentation. 
Some people like to script this out really heavily. Some people like to take their time. I'm gonna actually see if I can grab this example. Okay. Uh, no, I'm gonna grab actually, so I'm gonna go with the 2022 example. Okay, nope, not this one, sorry. Uh, this one, okay. So here's our tema curricular, which is la vida contemporánea, which is the tema de la presentación es cuál es la importancia de las salidas con amigos. Por ejemplo, tomar un café, ir al cine, sal, sal, salir a cenar, etc. Para las personas en una comunidad del mundo hispanohablante que te sea familiar. Compara la importancia que tienen en una región del mundo hispanohablante que te sea familiar con la importancia que tienen en tu comunidad o en otra comunidad. En tu presentación puedes referirte a lo que has estudiado, vivido, observado, etc. So, this is a very clear theme. Very often the themes are not on things that get people worried. Um, this is about, this is all cognate. So, the curricular theme is contemporary life. What's the importance of, of going out with friends? For example, having a coffee, going to the movies, going out to eat for people in a community of the Spanish speaking world in which you are familiar, compare the importance that this has, this, these, you know, going out has a, with a region of the Spanish speaking world with which you are familiar with the importance that it has in your own community or in another community. In your presentation, you should refer to what you have studied, lived, experienced, observed, et cetera. Um, so, um, a few questions um, that are coming in the chat that are really good. Do you have to talk about differences and similarities? It's a comparison. So you could talk about just similarities, just differences. Um, it works really well when you emphasize the differences um, rather than just saying like, es igual en México and, and los Estados Unidos. You want to sort of vary it up and find differences, but comparison entails both. Um, and this is the cultural comparison because you're taking a specific part of the Spanish speaking world with which you are familiar and comparing it to your own. Let me know in the chat what region of the Spanish speaking world or regions have you identified as ones you want to lean into tomorrow. Yo he vivido en España, en Madrid, la capital, por un año, en el año 2012, como becario de Fulbright, entre el Departamento de, de Estado en los Estados Unidos, con este Consejo Superior de Investigaciones Científicas en Madrid. Entonces, yo tengo experiencia viviendo en España. Y me encanta España. España es el parte del mundo hispanohablante que, con que uh, yo soy muy, uh, muy, muy familiar. So, I got people picking Spain, Chile, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Nicaragua, Cuba, Colombia, Puerto Rico, Spain. Good. Um, if you've got two places, that's great because you can kind of toggle back and forth. And there are very big differences between how Spanish pe speaking people in or how Spanish people in Spain will go uh, out with their friends. Uh, you can do something like in, in Spain, they have something called un, dar un paseo. Un paseo es a las siete y media, a las ocho en Madrid. Todo el mundo sale de la casa y camina paseando por las calles, mirando a la gente, tomando un café, una bebida. You just like go out and like walk around for a while. It's really like uplifting and really nice. It's a great kind of community event. It's a key part of, of Spanish life. It happens at eight porque se cenan a las pues once, a las diez y media, right? La cena empieza a, la, a una hora muy, muy tarde. Um, so, you know, dar un paseo with your friends, go out. If you go out with people in Madrid, you go out for hours and hours and hours. They like to, to talk and spend time together. And there are features in the Latin American world that are similar. That's what my whole response would be about. So as you go through this task, you're making sure that you're filling it with one or two or three specifically identifiable um, similarities and differences. You are grabbing onto specific words, dar un paseo, or uh, places, la capital de una de, de Colombia es Bogotá. Um, y en la ciudad de Bogotá hay varios ejemplos de cafés y whatever. Um, so, and let's see, just start babbling about the topic. So that you could do that. And I, my advice to you would be try to get like a one, two, three structure for yourself. It'll help you not just fill up time. Another thing, you notice I was reading really quickly. And like when I read faster, I make more mistakes. 
if you just slow it down a little bit, you might reach a nice kind of cadence. ¿Cuál es la importancia de las salidas con amigos? Por ejemplo, tomar un café, ir al cine, salir, salir a cenar, etc. Para las personas en una comunidad del mundo hispanohablante que te sea familiar. That's a much cleaner, more relaxed Spanish than what I, what I was doing earlier. And so if you're writing notes out and if you're following them, make sure um, that you are being systematic and thoughtful about filling up as much of that two minutes as you can. Don't go like this. Uh, you know, I'm much of the Hey, Andre, Estados Unidos, España, but primero ejemplo, like, calm down. Hay, hay varios ejemplos de diferencias entre los Estados Unidos y México en, con este tema de las salidas con amigos. En primer lugar, la diferencia tiene que ver con ir al cine, bla, 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 right? And also, Mary, you're pointing out here, they do like it when you self-correct. They actually have inside of their rubric a, ru a set of rules about self-correction that people who self-correct and it helps are on the right track. So you are not, um, uh, you are not being graded on your perfection. In fact, let me just take a moment. We're going to do a little thing in the chat here. And you're going to write, I am not being graded. We'll do it in Spanish. The Spanglish. I'm not being graded on mi perfección. I am not being graded in mi perfección because perfection is the enemy of your of the good and your success tomorrow, right? You, I'm not being graded in mi perfección. You're being graded on your imperfección, right? I hope that throughout the exam tomorrow, if you stutter or pause or think or self-correct or flub, an English word comes out, you know, you will do it. You will go right into a recording. You'll be right there. Here's, here's the microphone. It'll be like this. Hola. Es muy right into the microphone and you'll knock everything over and it will, um, you'll feel like an idiot. Good. Do it. You feel like an idiot tomorrow and get the points you need and get the job done. That's what this is about. So you're not going to fix your Spanish score tonight. If you wanna practice some more, we've got a great playlist right here on our channel. I encourage you, if you've liked this video, press that like button, subscribe to our channel. The videos specifically that we've got on this playlist, which is in the description and on our page, we have last year's Night Before Cram, um, we have special session dedicated to writing. We have um, these, the 2020 exams are all about that because that was an audio only exam a couple of years ago. Um, and so it breaks everything down um, in that way. So that's, that's available to you, but it's not about that, right? What the goal for tonight is to get yourself a lot of rest and to shift gears from perfection and, you know, like I need, I, 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 oh, I didn't know what alojamiento meant, break, beating yourself up when you don't know, and to go in and to slay this exam. Be amazing. Get as many points as you can. It'd be awesome. Now, I want to check in the chat. Um, uh, yeah, and there is some review of multiple choice strategies in the review that I did last year. So check that out. Esle mañana, y'all. I like that. That's a really nice one. Um, I like that. Okay, hold on, let's do this. Uh, okay, let's do it like this. Let's do, and I'll, we're gonna do, everyone in the chat type, vamos a esleer mañana. And I just pinned it. I wanna see the whole chat light up with this. Um, and yeah, that's a great tip, Isabella. Do not leave your your um, your bubbling in for the last second. And the tips for multiple choice questions, check out our videos for that. Um, you guys are gonna be fine. You're gonna esle out mañana. You're gonna, if you've enjoyed this video, press that like button, everyone. I hope that you do well. Um, be, be in touch with us. We're gonna be posting more information on Instagram, TikTok, and all of our platforms. And let me know in the chat to, yeah, there it is. Oh, the es layering. That's what I want to see. Guys, trust yourselves. You're, you're tu propia voz. You've been working on it all year long. You know how to, how to do this. And what you're going to do is not aim for perfection. You're going to aim for what you can achieve. So 
Que tengas buena suerte. Have a good night, everyone.